celebrate coming into this year and to start for the next hundred years, we need to be um, thinking about what else can we do in this community fund? The, the basic infrastructure. Yes, it's it's great to, to remove uh, um, you know the pollution elements into the St. Clair River. Yes, it's great to improve the roads. But what are we doing about the quality of life infrastructure? And this city has not had a major <coughs> project going back to what is now the RBC Center almost 20 years ago, and before that the Y. And I think we need to, as we look at Centennial Park, think about it's going to be the 50th anniversary of that park in 217. It's going to be the 150th anniversary of Canada in 217. Let's look at doing something there or elsewhere in the community to celebrate uh, uh, the community. And you give the community something beyond just the basics that any council can provide. Um, we're seeing lots of investment. Uh, the BioAmber plant uh, is, is just revolutionary. First project of its kind in North America. It's inviting in others very interested in this biofuel, bioeconomy. We were the first major leader in this country into that game. Now others are trying to catch up with us. But uh, I'm very confident that uh, we're build, developing that cluster there that we'll see much more job creation. Housing starts, 30 more houses last year than the year before, that's a good sign. I can't go into a lot of detail, but the only reason I can get the observer to come to these meetings is if I throw something out that might be of interest to them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Uve plant, the Uve plant has sold it has sold to local investors. And uh, that, I can't give any more detail, and I'll let them uh, come forward when they're ready to do that. And I say this with their permission. Um, this is great for us. It's 350,000 square feet. It is a place that we've been advocating as economic development uh, uh, officials over the last number of years, but we haven't had the most cooperative ownership. So this is a huge step forward. It is a, a prime asset. Look at the location. Look at the border crossing. It's less than 15 years old. It has the type of physical space that we need. We get approached all the time, and VIP is a good location. They've got about 50,000 square feet. We don't have a lot of buildings in this community. The developers don't want to build on spec. So this gives us a, a great opportunity to look at manufacturing and other opportunities into this community. And there'll be more about that in the, uh, in the uh, time ahead. Um, social issues, that's very important to me, because again, you don't fill the community just with, with the physical <coughs> infrastructure. A memo to Sarnia General Hospital, Blue Water Health, whatever they're called these days, get on with the detox center. You know, I've been championing this for over 15 years, and they now, it was passed to them by the lens, and it's time that they move forward with the location. The, the operating funds will be there. Uh, Norm Alex, uh, in great generosity, before he passed away, left a million dollars to go towards the project. Uh, so we need to move forward with the location, and we need to get on with it. Um, there are hundreds of people each day in this community that are living quiet lives of desperation because of addictions. And because they can't get the very basic few days of treatment they need to go to a longer term facility, they continue to lead those lives. And if you know anyone in addiction, give them an excuse and they will welcome it. And we've been giving far too long excuses to people who are addicted to not find a solution in their community where they can move to a better place in their own lives. So that to me is a priority and then we'll continue to push for health and the lens to move forward on this issue. Um, the county, actually to its credit, when we had the county carrying the, the ball, uh, had a, a site option, and we're ready to move forward and to, um, and to have that location operated as, uh, as a, a, a withdrawal management center. They only backed off because the lens came in with the offering grants and they, the money needs to flow through a hospital. So it's important now that Blue Water Health tell the community when they will have a location and when we can move forward with dealing with that site. Due to zoning issues, there's only a few locations in the community that uh, are, um, are currently zoned, so it's important that they do that as soon as possible. Um, just on other levels of government, and uh, don't, you might note I never say higher levels of government. The first level of government in this country after the First Nations was municipalities. The last to join the game was the federal government in 1867. And municipalities are closer to people's lives they're more engaged in people's lives, and we are equals, whether they understand that or not. Um, working very hard on regional outreach. I've met uh, three times now with the mayor, with the new mayor of London, Matt Brown. And in fact, he's going to take me to the Bill Cosby show on Thursday night, but I got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and the mayor of Windsor, who's also new. And uh, we are trying to rebuild a relationship between the three communities, and we're <coughs> also talking to Stratford and other communities. This region does not have the clout at Queen's Park or Ottawa because we are not a united voice. And it's incredibly important I can use my time to 
to, and I used to back uh, back in the early, late 80s, early 90s with Tom Gossel in London and, um, and the Mayor Windsor at the time, we had an effective voice. And every time I drive down the highway from London to Kitchener, I'm always very proud of the fact we're the ones that fought for that barrier, that barrier that protects people from crossing over. Because we lost many lives, including three people from the college here, because there was no barriers. And we lobbied and lobbied and lobbied and were successful. We lobbied to stop the train tracks and we were successful at that time. We need to get back to, just as Captain Wynn knows who the GTA is, they need to know who Southwestern Ontario is. And I was really pleased to see the Premier and the Prime Minister finally met last night. I mean, that speaks to me about what's wrong with partisan politics. Glad they met. It shouldn't have been that way. It should have happened. It just it should be a matter of routine, and I'm not picking the winners and losers on that particular thing. Um, yeah, hockey game. <laughs> See, Harper was very smart, and I mentioned this on the radio this morning. Gave her the meeting with very short notice, and not two hours before the entire country was mesmerized and still is today with the hockey game. Yeah. So politically, it was a very smart move. He was the best skater off the ice last night. <laughs> <laughs> First Nations, First Nations, it's important. We're one of two communities in this country that has a First Nations reserve within our boundaries. We're going to start something new here in the next couple of months. Uh, uh, relationship building exercise, one of the six cities in this country. And one of the things I've learned over the years is people will say, why? I mean, they don't vote for you, they're not, you know, they're not taxpayers for, for safe property tax to the community. It's incredibly important. And one of the things I learned was from a chief in Vancouver many years ago, I was down on Wolfville Island, and um, he said, what's your relationship like with First Nations? I said, it's, it's quite good. He said, well, uh, non-First Nations people always say that when there's no problems. It's easy to say that, right? It's easy to say that in any relationship. And when we had some issues here a couple of years ago with the uh, rail blockade, the reason we could solve it peacefully and with no arrest is really simple. We have a relationship. So that's important to me that we build that relationship and that we continue to do so. Uh, quality of life to me is it's just justice, it's not charity. And we need to continue to try to help people get to a better place here. We lost a lot of jobs in sectors, uh, call, sec call centers, uh, gaming, and other areas about 10 years ago that we worked hard to create. And that gave, a, that gave a second opportunity to many people in this community. And we need to keep, keep kind of trying to shrink that gap between those that have and those that don't. Uh, I believe very strongly in a purpose-driven community. And um, that to me is important. And that's what I've seen the, the really develop over the last 10 or 15 years, where you do have the economic partnership, the business, labor, First Nations, educators, local government, all with just a common vision. Do you remember the time, 10, 15 years ago, you see the conflict between construction trades and the construction industry here? You'd see all this conflict, and none of it was productive. And that's not there anymore, because what we've learned is that uh, if you're not talking to each other, you end up just shouting. And that uh, I think you'll see, and we hear quite often from outside the community about the collaborative nature of the community when we're moving forward on issues. Uh, one of the other things, personal observation, is that, <laughs> what I've learned is that uh, I don't need to be in the spotlight. Um, what I need to be is in the center of the circle and to be reaching out to the different people and groups that can build the community and at the same time move those people and encourage them. And that's a lot of what my job is to is encourage people, to nurture them. I can't maybe help them financially, but I can help them in other ways and to give them some sense of purpose. Um, and I think that, again, is, uh, is, is key for why this community is going to move forward in the second part of this uh, our second century. And uh, that to me, it says, as I close here, is that um, the, that's the other thing I've learned too, by the way, that the, the best speeches have a really good beginning and a really good ending, and they're as close as possible, right? Because I know, I just know. There's some clubs, I'm going to that other service club, uh, Golden K Club, right? And um, sometimes you don't get any questions at the end. I always know that when I'm finished here, there's going to be questions. <laughs> and good questions. Uh, good questions. But you know, when you think about 100 years ago when we became a city, uh, there was thousands of people lined up down uh, Front Street that none of them could ever envision where it would be today. And the example I always use is Chris Hatfield. That those people that lined Front Street, the 10,000 that were celebrating us becoming a city 100 years ago, never could have envisioned that one of our own 100 years later would be a box taking those pictures and sending them back to us instantly. <coughs> That's how much we progress. And so when I talk about the future, I always say to people that uh, it's become my catchphrase over the last year or two is, when you think about the next 100 years, uh, dream no small dreams for some. Questions?